If the world knows nothing else, the world should know this. Under President Donald Trump, America stands with Israel. Vice President Mike Pence goes to the Holy Land. Hear what he told Israel's parliament and see who tried to shut him down. And as Sweden opens its doors to Muslim refugees, they're shoving Christian converts out, even the ones that face persecution back home. Plus, under the ashen clouds of a volcano ready to blow, relief agencies race to help those fleeing the coming eruption. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of Christian World News. I'm George Thomas. My colleague Wendy Griffith is out on assignment. America stands with Israel. Vice President Mike Pence delivered that message on his visit to the Jewish state. He also said the U.S. supports a two-state solution for Middle East peace. By the way, he did not give that message to Palestinian leaders because they refused to meet with him. Chris Mitchell has this report. Before Air Force Two ever sit down in the Middle East, the vice president talked with CBN's David Brody about the reason for his trip. If the world knows nothing else, the world should know this. Under President Donald Trump, America stands with Israel. And we'll be delivering that strong message. Uh, it was 70 years ago that the nation of Israel, in a miracle of history, came back into ex existence in its ancient homeland and every day Americans have cherished that accomplishment and we'll, we'll be there to celebrate that. And celebrate he did, earning high praise from Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. This is the first time that I stand here where both leaders can say those three words, Israel's capital, Jerusalem. Pence became the first U.S. Vice President ever to be invited to address the Knesset. He kept his cool when Israeli Arab demonstrators protested the U.S. policy change toward Jerusalem. It is deeply humbling for me to stand before this vibrant democracy. He shared his heart, along with his reverence for the scriptures pertaining to Israel, and firmly restated the new U.S. policy. Jerusalem is Israel's capital, and as such, President Trump has directed the State Department to immediately begin preparations to move the United States Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Israeli President Reuven Rivlin called the vice president a mensch, a very high compliment in Yiddish, meaning a person of integrity. Emotional visits to Yad Vashem, Israel's Holocaust Memorial, and his prayers at the Western Wall sealed the visit like few others in the history of American diplomacy. And the reason is that this administration is putting its embassy where its mouth is. For years and years, U.S. presidents and vice presidents, secretaries of state have all said, given lip service to Jerusalem as being the capital of Israel, but we never put it into practice. And this administration is saying that it will put it into practice. This has the potential to be the most significant visit by a vice president to any nation in recent U.S. history. Pence also promised change is coming to the U.S. signed nuclear deal with Iran. That will put Washington on a collision course with European allies who are doing big business with Iran. And with boycotts and curses, Palestinian leaders have set a hostile course against Washington on the international stage. But the coming debate will show the U.S. and Israel largely united over the city King David made his capital more than 3,000 years ago. Thanks, Chris. Guatemala became the second nation to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Government leaders' Christian faith influenced that decision. Gary Lane traveled to Central America for this exclusive interview with Guatemala's vice president. Guatemala's decision to move its embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem happened after much prayer and it shows that this country has had a long-term relationship with the state of Israel. Moments after Guatemala's president received the Friend Design Award, I sat down with the vice president, Hafez Cabrera, to discuss his government's decision to move its embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Now, many Christians in America believe that the embassy announcement, the moving of the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, is long overdue and even prophetic. What do you think? 
Yes, we do share that idea that prophecy is coming to pass and uh, we are pleased at Guatemala is contributing to having that happen and we hope that it'll soon be a reality. Vice President Cabrera says he prayed about the Jerusalem decision with his family. This was uh, key uh, for us making the decision to express our Christ-likeness and to uh, express our faith. We did pray. It was uh, uh, something that we meditated on and that we later on shared with uh, President Jimmy Morales. Following my interview with the Guatemalan vice president, I talked with Mike Evans, the man behind the Friend of Zion Award. He's rallying nations to move their embassies from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. What role did prayer play? How important was that in this oh, decision? Oh, 100% it happened through the power of prayer. This didn't begin in the president's office. This began in the churches. The churches rallied in Guatemala. They started interceding and touching heaven regarding this. Listen, the churches are very, very powerful in Guatemala. They are big, they're organized, they're believers, and they're very, very pro-Israel. So they united, and that wave of faith and intercession came right up to the president's office and the foreign ministers and the vice president's office, and they said yes. Gary Lane, CBN News, Guatemala City, Guatemala. Thanks, Gary. In northern Syria, a Christian community is calling out for help. Turkish soldiers targeting what is what it says are Kurdish terrorists launched a military offensive against the city of Afrin. The fighting has killed dozens of uh, people, forced thousands to flee Afrin. Afrin, by the way, is a Kurdish enclave and is home, about, home to about 250 Christian families. A Christian pastor there is urging Christians around the world to pray for his beleaguered city. To talk more about the situation in Afrin, Syria, I'm joined by Pierre Overberg. He's a pastor and has made numerous trips to northern Iraq. He joins me now via Skype from Norway. How bad is the fighting in Afrin right now? It's, it's very bad. It's very serious. They are bombarded by bombs from, from uh, F-16. Uh, and they also, Turkish forces, rebel forces, are uh, entered the, cross the border into Afrin and, and fighting for every inch here. Uh, and why is why did the Turks attack the city? Uh, there seems to be no lo logical reason for this. Uh, this region has been quite peaceful during the, the Syrian war. A lot of refugees have taken shelter there. But it seems that they, they are, what they're saying is they're calling the Kurdish forces for, for uh, terrorist groups uh, associated with PKK. Um, which is, uh, there's no organic link, but this is, seems to be their excuse for doing what they're doing. There are about 250 Christian families caught in the crossfire. Is that correct? From the information we have that these Christian families are, very few of them are actually staying in the city now. They're hiding in caves in the, in the mountains uh, close to Afrin, the city of Afrin. And they are gathering in the, in the caves and praying for, for, for the situation. And my understanding is that many uh, of those refugees, as long, uh, along with Kurds, have come to Christ uh, recently, right? Yes, that's what we hear. Uh, and uh, we don't have like, specific numbers or, or, or anything like that, but there, there seems to be a, uh, something going on. And, and, but unfortunately, as you said about, uh, they are blocked from three sides, from the Turkish side to two sides, and, and then from the rebel-controlled areas. So there's only one access point, and that's through the Syrian government control areas. So, so it's very limited with, with aid and provision for the people there. How can we pray for the situation that is unfolding right now in Afrin? Well, uh, what the believers ask us to pray is that the international community with, uh, with uh, America and Russia, that they will stop this bombing. Uh, Russia controls the airspace. They could easily stop the Turkish invasion. And America, that has been partnering with the same forces just in other areas of Syria, defending, uh, beating ISIS, uh, uh, Al-Qaeda groups, Al-Nusra groups, all these groups have been uh, uh, overcome by these uh, Kurdish fighters. So it's a really big paradox that they are no suffering this attack from, from Turkey. And really, uh, America really needs to stand up and stop this. They can do it. Okay, terrific. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Coming up, 
A Christian woman flees to Sweden seeking a safe haven from persecution in her homeland. Why Sweden's government might send her back. Prayer is a communication with God. It's a powerful exchange between God and man. We're going to answer many of your questions in Answered Prayer, How to Pray Effectively and See God Work in Your Life. In Pat Robertson's latest DVD, Answered Prayer, you'll learn the biblical principles of prayer and how to get your prayers answered and hear miraculous stories of answers to prayer from Pat's own faith-filled journey. We share some of the lessons that I've learned along the way. Plus, you'll see dramatic, true stories of life-changing answers to prayer. God proves himself time and time again. He's in the room with us, answering people's prayers. I think I survived because God has a bigger plan for my life. The doctor was just like, I've never seen anything like this before. And he hears your prayers. I never saw this coming. Every great work of God is preceded by prayer. Answered Prayer how to pray effectively and see God work in your life. Call now or go to cbn.com. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. My husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. And welcome back to Christian World News. Thousands of Muslim migrants, immigrants, sorry, in Sweden are hearing about Jesus Christ. One reason is the evangelistic ministry of this woman. Her name is Anahita Parson. And she has personally seen 1,500 Muslims saved in that country. She is a former Muslim herself, and she told us how God is using her to transform the lives of Muslims in Europe. I decided to follow him. I decided to do everything for people know him, people know and understand him, uh, what he did for, uh, for us people. Uh, and uh, which uh, price he paid for that. And uh, just now I uh, only um, try to uh, speak with the uh, Muslim, uh, speak about uh, evangel evangelists uh, <laughs> and uh, about uh, Bible and uh, prayer for that people. And uh, I know prayer have a uh, power. I can't uh, uh, speak about uh, Jesus, what he did, and uh, um, in in the Bible and in my life. And after that, uh, I ask that people, do you want to pray? Uh, always they say yes. Oh, that's powerful. Parson said she has faced threats, as you can imagine, for her work, but she is strong in the Lord. Just a few years ago, Sweden uh, allowed more migrants to enter the country than the rest of Europe combined. But now the Swedes have yanked the welcome mat. And as my colleague uh, CBN's Dale Hood reports, Christians are being sent home to their home countries to face imprisonment and torture. Sweden is about to deport Iranian Christian actress Aydin Stranson back to the Islamic Republic of Iran where she faces torture, rape, and even death in an Iranian prison. But as Swedish officials have told Aydin, becoming a Christian was her decision. And now it's her problem, and not theirs. This from a nation that thinks of itself as one of the most humane countries in the world. After all, Sweden is the humanitarian superpower, which welcomed refugees with open arms, until the government took too much political heat and decided some have to go whether it kills them or not. Sweden's migration board even violates its own stated principles that it will never deport asylum seekers to a nation where they will be harmed. 
the Migration Board has on its home page information about uh, each country. And in the information regarding Iran, there are plenty of reports stating that it is standard to torture and to rape in Iranian prisons. And the question we have been asking the Migration Board time and time again is, why are you putting this information on your home page if you don't follow it? Swedish attorney Gabriel Donner has assisted an estimated 1,000 Christian asylum seekers facing deportation. Do you think in Ideen's case they, they think she's lying or they just don't care? Primarily they don't care. It's numbers. They have promised the public in Sweden that they will deport more people than before. And so they have to fill the quota. Eideen Stranson came to Sweden in 2014 on a work visa and adopted a Swedish last name. She had starred in films and a TV series in Iran, making her an even bigger target if she is sent back. She says she came to Christ in Iran after seeing video of Muslims stoning a woman to death. And I decided at uh, that moment I don't want to be Muslim anymore. And then she had a dream. I had a dream about uh, Jesus. He was sitting near me and uh, he took my hand. In Iran, where it can be deadly to convert to Christianity, Aydin kept her conversion largely a secret. But when she came to Sweden, she requested a public baptism. I want to have it baptized in a public because I want to say I don't afraid anymore. I'm free, I'm Christian. I, I want to everybody know about that. Iranian intelligence most likely knows too. She's already gotten threats from Muslims on social media. Article 33 of the Geneva Convention on Refugees, which Sweden signed, prohibits nations from deporting asylum seekers back to their home countries if they face danger. But that hasn't stopped Sweden. CBN News has interviewed several Christians in Sweden facing danger because of the threat of deportation to Islamic nations. Donner estimates there are 8,000 Christian asylum seekers hiding in Sweden because they're under deportation orders. He says part of the problem is that migration officials don't understand why someone would become a Christian. And they don't understand what it means to be a Christian. Less than 20% of Swedes say they believe in God. This is most apparent when they come to the question when a convert says, I converted because of the love I have received from Jesus Christ. And they almost mockingly ask the convert, what do you mean by love? They don't understand the message in the Bible. It's just completely alien to them. The Swedish Migration Board's press officer told us, if the person has well-founded reasons to fear persecution due to religious beliefs, he or she will be granted asylum in Sweden. But Ideen's asylum request has been rejected and her case has been turned over to border police. At her hearing, a Swedish migration official told her it wouldn't be as bad for her in Iran as she expected, because she would only have to spend about six months in prison. Donner told us of a similar case where an Iranian woman was imprisoned for becoming a Christian. After her release, she was silent. She did not tell what had happened. After six weeks, she threw herself out from the window on the fourth floor and killed herself. But stories like that may not stop Aydin's deportation. Six months in a, as a woman in a prison is not, no problem. No. They don't care. No, they don't care about that. Dale Hurd, CBN News, Stockholm. After CBN News first aired this story, the Hungarian government learned of Aydin's situation and announced that it is ready to offer her asylum. Up next, in the Philippines, a volcano is ready to erupt and locals are fleeing for their lives. See the relief ministry rushing into the danger zone to help. Parents, the Superbook Bible app is a great way to get your child reading the Bible because in today's busy world, we can use some help. The free Superbook Bible app has fun stuff your kids will love. They'll have a blast learning the Bible playing great games, watching cool videos, discovering heroes in the Bible. They'll have fun while they learn God's Word. The Superbook Kids Bible app, available now. 
life. It's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest, life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your every day. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. All of a sudden, everything starts to let go the ledge and everything. Right when I realized that I was buried, I knew I was gonna die. So I just cried out to God, said, God, what do I do? And I heard him just as loud as you're talking to me, go find your brother. See miraculous stories like this in Answered Prayer. Pat Robertson's latest teaching uncovers the keys to help you get results, break down barriers, and build dynamic faith to receive your Answered Prayer. Available now. Mayo Volcano right behind me here is usually a tourist attraction in the Philippines, but since it has started spewing hot lava and ash, tens of thousands are fleeing the area. Lucille Talusan shows us how CBN is helping those forced out of their homes. The alert on Mayon Volcano was raised to level four as it continued to display intense sporadic lava fountaining. Behind me, you can see Mount Mayon spewing lava. According to volcanologists, these frequent explosions signify that Mayon volcano is at the peak of a major and very dangerous eruption. Mayona can't help but cry over her family's situation. Ironically, she was named after the famous tourist attraction, but it's now made her life miserable. A single mom of six children, she recalls the night when she and her children were forced to run to safety. She said, I was really frightened at the rumbling sound that a volcano made. It sounded very loud like the engine of a big truck. Although her house is inside the 8-kilometer danger zone, Mayona remained in her house. When her children started crying, she decided to take them to the evacuation center. This school is now an evacuation center. Mayona and her children share a classroom with 12 other families. They are among the more than 60,000 residents who were forced to leave their homes because of the imminent danger posed by Mayon Volcano. Most of them, like Mayona, fled with just meager belongings and no money to buy food. They were very happy and thankful that CBN Humanitarian came to give them rice, eggs, and other food items. And more than the physical food, Mayona received spiritual nourishment as a CBN Humanitarian Church partner told her about the good news of salvation through Christ and prayed for her. Her face lit up and she said, My faith has just been strengthened because I know that whatever happens, I am now certain that God will never leave me. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology says, Two to three months may pass before Mayon Volcano is peaceful again. In these trying times, CBN Humanitarian is committed to help. Lucille Telusen, CBN News, Albay, Philippines. And to find out how you can help CBN bring assistance to those in need around the world, log on to our website at cbnnews.com. Stay with us. We'll be back right up. Kids, do you love games? And do you love discovering things? Yeah! Well, do you? Yeah! Then you're gonna love this. It's the new free Superbook Kids Bible app. You can play games, watch videos, find answers to your questions, and a whole lot more. The new Superbook Kids Bible app. Free downloads available on iTunes and Google Play now. 
Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. My husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. When you give, smiles grow bigger. When you care, homes are happier. When you comfort, the hurt goes away. When we all come together to love, miracles happen. Welcome back to Christian World News. In New York City, a pastor found a unique way to reach his neighbors. As Caitlin Burke reports, his inspiration came from all places, a Peanuts comic. Each Tuesday on a New York City street corner, a booth goes up, Pastor Gregory Fryer sits down, and the crowd streams by. I have been pastor of this church for 25 years. But I have learned that it's easier to meet people if I simply sit on the street corner. His bright yellow booth is a tribute to an old comic. Some people get the reference, others not so much. Either way, Pastor Fryer makes it work. All kinds of people stop by, and they all seem to stop by with goodwill. But sometimes people sit down on my booth and they burst into tears. My job is to listen as carefully as I can and then to speak back words of encouragement by talking about Jesus. When you sit on the street corner as often as Pastor Fryer does, your community starts to notice. That's why he started this whole thing in the first place, to let people know he's available for them. The church itself, it's beautiful. I love it with all my heart, but it's a little bit intimidating to people on the outside. That's what I'm afraid of. So I simply sit there in this kind of humble booth and make myself available. As for the five cent charge, the church provides your fee. Still, many drop in some coins or a few bucks to help in the cause. I think it's because they like the idea. They like the idea of the pastor being available, even if they themselves don't feel the need for the pastor. From the corner of 88th and Lexington in New York City, I'm Caitlin Burke. What an inspiring story. Creative ways to reach a hurting world. Well, folks, thanks so much for joining us. That is it for this week's edition of Christian World News. From all of us here in the studio and back in the control room, we hope you have a blessed week. Until next week, goodbye and God bless you. <laughs>